What's up, Tech Heart? My workflow is I used to use Clonezilla to back up and restore various computers that I have here at Tech Heart. I've since changed to RescueZilla because it works a little bit easier. But today, we're going to talk about Mini OS. It's a new rescue operating software or a utility operating software. It's meant to be ran on a USB stick. It's persistent, so you can write data or install other applications and uh, have that remain with you. And it's really cool. Today, I'm going to show you why, for me, it's replacing RescueZilla, Clonezilla, and giving me a lot more tools in my tool belt. Let's jump onto the screen capture, and I'll get booted in. If you're not subbed to TechHeart, go ahead and do it. 90% of you are. Come along. And just like that, here is Mini OS Ultra. Let's go check out what Mini OS offers. I'll pull up a web browser. Mini OS comes in three editions, Standard, Toolbox, and Ultra. It's a portable rescue and toolkit OS. It includes Clonezilla, RescueZilla, file recovery, hardware diagnostics, network tools, and many other applications. Let's scroll down and read what this Debian-based persistent live Linux is. It's your pocket Linux, a powerful, stylish, convenient OS. Imagine all the power and freedom of a desktop Linux that is always at your fingertips, literally in your pocket. Since it's persistent, you can add your files, settings, favorite programs, and they'll be present in the next instance. You can use it for system recovery as a mobile workstation, for development and testing, embedded development, and for security and privacy. Leave no traces on the host systems that you boot MiniOS on. The first is standard. It can do basic everyday tasks, has a lightweight desktop, and essential graphical and console utilities. Toolbox, on the other hand, comes with system maintenance, diagnostics, and recovery tools like disk partition work cloning, data recovery, network diag, encryption, and more. We have booted into MiniOS Ultra. It's the Toolbox plus more. It'll have your LibreOffice, document, image, video editing, and more applications for heavier use. They're all pretty sparse. Even Ultra only needs 768 megabits of RAM, a 64-bit 1 gigahertz processor, and 1.7 gigabits of USB stick space. So all you do is you download and burn the ISO using Bolina Etcher on Mac OS, Rufus on Windows, or the terminal DD command if you're a Linux hacker. Let's get back over to our mini OS. As mentioned, one of the main things I use MiniOS for is a replacement for Clonezilla and RescueZilla. Instead of having to boot into a complete Clonezilla OS, I can run it right here. I prefer RescueZilla, and that's included too. No need for me to back up a restore using RescueZilla. I now have a full suite of applications. Other cool things are BleachBit, Veracrypt for all of your encryption needs. Gparted in case you needed to work on an internal or external hard disk. Audacity, Blender, Firefox and GIMP, Inkscape, KeePass, KDiskMark. You have your full office suites. I'll point this out. This is the mini OS session manager. So we're in session number one. We can write data or install applications and those will be persistent on new reboots. We can have several sessions or we can even boot from a fresh start that will wipe everything. OBS Studio, UGIT and VLC, VS Codium. We have Wireshark. Another awesome network utility is ZenMap. This is like a GUI and map and it's really neat. You can scan one IP or your entire network pretty easily. And there we go, we have a complete report about our network. Pretty spiffy. We have software that we can undelete files, photo rec, and there are command line options for this also. In fact, let me open a terminal. It asks us to do an update, so I will. And we'll give it an upgrade.
Okay, and after that update finishes, your mini OS is completely updated and that will persist so long as when you boot in, you uh, accept that session one that we're a part of. I'll demonstrate another thing. We don't have Vim installed, but we can simply install it using apt like in any other Debian based Linux distro. Now we can see that Vim is installed. And as mentioned before, that will be present upon a reboot. Now let's talk about some data recovery that we can do. We have an app called test disk and photo rec. Both of these can be used to restore deleted files. And to demonstrate that, let's do a DF H and we can see here that I don't have any external drives other than that USB stick. So let me insert one. And now we can run another DFH. We can see SDD1, which is a Ventoy USB for me, but it doesn't matter, it's just a disc. So I think we can go over here to Media Live Ventoy. And this is that USB stick. It holds all my ISOs in this folder, but that doesn't matter. Let's edit a file. I'll just call it data.txt, and I'm just gonna put some data in here. Okay, so that file is written. We can see it, data.txt. I'm gonna pull up Thunar, and I'll go to Ventoy, and we can see that data file. So, let's delete it. We'll move it to trash. Now we can see it there, and let's empty the trash. That should fully delete the file on my Ventoy USB. It's not there, and we can no longer cat the file. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means we lost our file! Or, let's run test disk. We don't need any logging. And I'll select that Ventoy USB stick, SDD. Test disk automatically detects what type of partition it is. And this is an Intel PC partition. I'll go to Advanced File System Utils. And I want the bigger partition. So right here. We don't want to create an image, but we do want to file undelete. So I'll select that. And look at this. Right down here, I can see data.txt. I can press colon to select that file and capital C to copy it. And then where do I want to place it? I want to place it right here. Copy done. Okay. Did I get it? There it is. We've successfully undeleted a file and you can too using mini OS. Ho ho ho! Very quickly, we can see how mini OS could be a really good tool in your belt. I suggest that you grab it and burn it to a USB stick. For the last example, I'm going to edit another file, persistent.txt. This is data. Persistent. We'll see. And do we have btop? We don't. So let's do a sudo apt install btop. And the last thing I'll do on this video is give a reboot and make sure that we have btop and our persistent.txt. What do you guys think? Have I swayed you to installing mini OS or using it anyway? It's gonna replace RescueZilla for me, but let me know about you. So I'll give it a reboot. Okay, and we'll open up our terminal. We can run btop and we can see it's still present and we can cat persistent.txt and it's there. This for me is a game changer. Let TechHeart know, are you on the mini OS train? We'll see you later. TechHeart out.